uh, starting off with laths for the lath and plaster work. Uh, traditionally, these were riven, so you'd have um, the, the round of the, the timber, probably something about four inch in, in diameter, and you'd split it radially. And you do that with a thing called a fro, which is a sharp blade with a handle on and a beetle to beat it down. And you're following the grain of the timber. And so this handle allows you to control the blade to follow down the grain of the timber. And so this gives you um, a very strong riven material because you're following the grain, you're not cutting across the grain. And so traditionally, um, oak or chestnut was used um, to create your, your uh, laths for lath and plaster work and for tile battens as well. Um, oak today, unfortunately, most of it's hedgerow grown, so it's not straight grained, and so it's all over the place, as you can see, like that, very difficult to use. Chestnut is now being uh, grown in coppices again for producing traditional laths on the Petworth, National Trust Petworth Estate. They're now coppicing every 15 years and you get quite a nice straight grain material and they can give you lengths of about five foot long of, of the, these very fine laths and they're tremendously strong. So uh, really good material. Um, this is Scots pine, uh, which again, it's riven rather than sawn and so gives you quite a reasonable lath. What you want to avoid is the modern softwood that's sawn because you're cutting across the grain. It doesn't give you a very strong material. Um, it's being kiln dried and uh, whereas these are naturally dried and you know, the minute you put a wet material like lime mortar on it, uh, it expands like hell and then um, it shrinks back and in doing so it breaks all the keys. So it's absolutely useless for sort of lath and plaster work. So that's the, the basic material. Um, for uh, applying it, um, you're using a float um, to push uh, the, um, the, the, the lime uh, plaster right through between um, the, uh, the, the battens to create keys as it turns over. And to make those keys strong, you're using hair. Uh, these days, we're not going down to the... Um, you know, to the, to the leather tanning place and getting scrapings off the, the beasts. Um, that's not allowed anymore because of anthrax and things like that. So it's all imported these days from guess where? China. So uh, we get um, bovine hair, it's usually yak. Um, horse hair, mane and tail hair, is very good for, for plaster work. Or Angoran goat for the very fine uh, decorative plaster work. And um, as I say, it's forced up between the laths and you're creating keys. This is a bit that's fallen off because the keys are broken, uh, but you can see um, the, the hair within it, the bovine hair, etc., from the, uh, the uh, 18th century. Um, rather than laths, sometimes they used water reed. And this is a piece of plaster that's come off a ceiling and underneath it was water reed that had been attached to the, uh, to the joists um, to act as a base for their, their plaster work. Um, so, uh, yeah, so reed. And in fact, in that particular case, on top they'd used um, a lime, um, uh, an ash lime, uh, ash and lime to, to make a floor about that sort of thickness. So it was a composite sort of layer. Uh, well, what, are, what sort of things are we using today? Uh, well, we're using lime mortars and plasters, but we're also adding, um, rather than sort of sand aggregates, uh, sometimes uh, we're adding hemp as the aggregate, and that gives you uh, a plaster which um, is... Uh, very good as far as condensation and, and surface moisture is concerned. It will wick it away. Um, for renders and some in internal plaster work, I now use um, a plaster that's got um, 
cork granules in it rather than uh, a, a, a sand aggregate. And this makes a very lightweight material. You can put it on fairly thick and that will upgrade your solid wall tremendously, uh, much better than a, a, a layer of, of uh, Celotex on the inside or whatever. Um, it's really first rate. Um, a 30 mil thickness of that on a solid wall will boost your thermal efficiency tremendously. Um, usually we reinforce it with, with uh, that troweled in between layers. So um, if we do have a, a problem where we've got a very cold and damp wall, um, one can use cork sheet and then cover with the lime cork plasters um, and that will again boost the thermal efficiency. So again, it's using natural materials. Um, I mentioned the last scratcher for creating a key. Well, that's the sort of traditional one. It's just bits of cut off lath that's nailed together and that gives you your keys. Um, that's the B&Q equivalent <laughs> being used today. Um, inside and outside corners, performing those, that was the traditional bit of kit. For moulded plaster work, I mentioned the traditional moulds for using uh, to create the decorative plaster work, and this is an 18th century one for making sort of egg and dart uh, decoration, um, which um, you could do on the bench and then apply um, to the, the surface. This is an example of quite um, an intricate one, and this mould, well today it's a modern squeeze mould that they use that can, they can peel off, uh, but historically you had a multi-piece mould, so wherever it's undercut, you had an individual little bit that you could fish out once it had set. And that's made up with layers of hessian in to strengthen it, and quite often you had batten, uh, lengths of batten in it as well to stiffen it up. So that could go out on site and then be applied to the, to the wall. Um, again, you could get quite sort of decorative items like uh, you know, this, this fella here. And uh, he came out to site as a moulded uh, item. Um, you then, um, in your bucket, you, you had some gypsum lime and some hessian, and you made sort of a squidgy lump of it, pushed it on the back of this, and then just pushed him on the wall and put a prop in to hold him there for an hour or two until it had all set off. Um, and there we are. So that was the way of sort of applying. And again... Um, this is off a cornice, those twiddly bits that you get at regular intervals, and they're held on just the same with a bit of hessian with um, uh, plaster uh, to act as a, a sort of a sticky fixer to stick it on. And there we've got, um, not, not being cleaned back, so we've lost most of the detail. There's layers and layers of, of, of paint on it. Uh, but this is acorns and oak leaves, etc., that you can have a look at. I mentioned the running moulds, and we've just got a series of, of ones here uh, for creating the, the mouldings. So you'd have a horizontal timber batten on the wall to run it on, and you'd run it along to create the shapes. And you could use a series of these to develop quite um, uh, in, intricate shapes, etc. Okay, so that's a very quick sort of rush through uh, sort of the, the, the plasters and renders, etc. Okay, good.